be not like. Okay, to uh, everyone listening, or well, the, well, the the people who are listening, the few the that few. listen. Here's the deal: <laughs> Speed Society is going to be hosting all of these podcasts. You're going to be seeing a ton from these guys. I, like, they're yeah. How big are they, Sean? Uh, it's the biggest automotive website in the world, and I mean, they got a lot of cool shit. Yeah, we're stoked to be working with guys like that for sure. Anytime we can align ourselves with other huge automotive people, this is perfect. So also. Stop listening now and go and like it and comment on it. And the sooner you do that, hopefully the more podcast episodes you'll hear. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the Crow 405, Murder Nova, Midway Street Cars. Like it, comment on us. Tell us who you are. Tell us why you listen to it. Keep this going, please. There are people that are, don't want this to keep going. Yeah, there's going. people right now trying to make, trying to put an end to this. They, they so, don't want us on the air. And we got guys like Speed Society that want to help us keep it going. So Welcoming us. Let's do it. Rock and roll. Help everybody out. And while you're there, check it out. Their website's awesome. Welcome back to the Chief and Sean Show. It is Tuesday. We are on time, sort of. We're actually going to do. Mean, it's Tuesday. We're going to do a podcast on Tuesday like we're supposed to. And this should give us a few days break of you guys not yelling and screaming at us and making me feel terrible for never being where I'm supposed to be. Yes. But the bottom line is that I'm always on time. And on your time. On your time. Yeah, I'm on Indian time. There you go. And Indian time means I get there whenever I'm going to be there. But guaranteed, when I get there, I'm going to be fucking awesome. 100% when you get there. Yeah, and I'm good at stuff. So it kind of, it kind of just, I make everyone else accommodate for, for the time that I'm not there. But when I get there, I'm not going to be answering my phone or like, you know, dicking well, off. Yeah. Like, we, we know that. <laughs> and, and you don't realize this because you're never there until you're there. It sucks when you're not there. See? Nothing like, I know. you know, you always say nothing ever cool happens until you show up. Right. And if you live, there are some things. And that I've actually tried to pretty pr- cool I, before I, you get there. I've tried just to prove that But wrong, we redo but it when I get there. Yeah, but <laughs> then we all tell you about it, and then we all laugh again. Yeah. So, so you don't ever really miss anything. No, and, uh, McDougal is, uh, he's been around for, it's, it's Monkey's brother, yeah, right? McDougal. McDougal. He's, uh, his actual name is Justin McDaniel. Um, and he is, he's been around us for a long time. We've been doing the race car thing kind of together uh, in, in the same. He is race car. He's, he is a race car. He's race. He's car. literally. He's the only person I've ever met that is actually a race car. He, like, he looks like a like, like a race we. Car. I actually changed my title. Like, <laughs> like we uh, we go out and we do race car things, and everything we do is race car. Like Pretty that's sure his driver's license says race car. We're about race car. You know, like it's what we do. It's what we want to do. All we want to do is race cars. That's it. And, yes. But Justin takes it a step further than that, and he actually has become a race car like (laughs) he believes in his fucking crazy demented world that he is a race car like i it's it's one of the most contagious things that i've ever uh you know been a part of with someone because usually when i meet someone or we hang out with someone like they're usually not cool enough for me to actually want to like listen to them talk and stuff but this guy when he talks about being a race car you 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 get this sense of he's fucking insane like you're like wait like you're sitting there and i'm like when he's telling me about it the first time he was like no he's like i don't think you fucking understand chief he's like i'm a race car and i was like (laughs) i was sitting there and i was like okay what is okay that's cool i was like all right man so that's cool you're a race car and he's like no 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 like fucking seriously i'm i'm a race car he's like if you know me all we do is i talk about race car i'm on my way to go do race car I'm looking at buying stuff for race car. And he's like, I'm race car. Yeah. Like, that's who I want to hang out with is other race cars. And he's like, I don't <laughs> even care if you're there or not. I just want to hang out with other race cars like me. And I sat there in the truck and I was listening to him say this. And I was like, man, this guy's got fucking problems. Like he well, really, that, that, and he's from east of I-35. Yeah. Yes. So, so that is, that in, in, in itself <laughs> is a, is a, is a whole nother deal. If you're from the 405 or Oklahoma city or anywhere around this area, you know, after years of being here, you know, the different types of people that there are in this area. And there's something to be said about the fucking, you know, weirdness and craziness that goes on east of I-35. Well, and plus what, I mean, the town that he's from is, it's like the, it's the biggest weirdness. It's the Mecca. Of, it's, it's the, the Mecca. <laughs> Of weirdness. Yeah, east he's, of I-35. he's from the Little Axe area, right? And that is, uh, 
people from there are there's, are cool. There's a lot they of cool, cool going on. There's in Little a Axe. lot of cool. And, going and on. I never even knew about this until I, I moved up here and I met Monkey and his brother. And then you start realizing where the fuck are these guys? From? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, every once in a while, they'll bring some a buddy with them or something, <laughs> and they're equally as cool. And you're like, holy shit, they're just they're different. Yeah, sure. they're different. And so Monkey's been with us forever. He did heat and air with me before we ever even got into the you know trying to be race cars and. We were semi race cars. We were then. semi. We were semi. We were part time yeah. race cars. Part time race car. Uh, and so you know, you guys all recognize Monkey from that crappy TV show that we're on. He's the guy with the big beard and always telling me not to do things and yes. trying to tell Explain everyone. He check. tells the deal. Like the deal. so, Monkey's the he, deal maker. I get the deal daily. So if something's going on, Monkey's going to tell you the deal. He's going to tell you how it works before he proves you wrong. Yes. And his brother is McDaniel, and so they're the Monkey brothers, and. <laughs> Uh, when we went to Georgia, it was the first time that McDougal has actually like gone racing with us, like as part of our, you know, group group of race cars. <laughs> and uh, and we took like seven race cars with us. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not kidding you, man. When when we opened the trailer Monday morning to go to Georgia, and he was he showed up here to go with us. Of course, I was three hours late. Uh, no, no, he wasn't. No, I, I mean, I was... really wasn't, but technically, you know yeah. what I mean? But there was. But everybody else was here three I hours mean, before you. I right. was here at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I mean, you did get here at nine. <laughs> I mean, there was a period of time we were waiting. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. and then, but then when I got here. It was cool after that. It was cool. And I was on the road and, and we're all in a big, huge group text. And McDougal is waiting at the shop before I even leave my house. We left at like six. And he's already talking about he's at the shop. And we were on the road well over three hours before before and he's still at the shop waiting <laughs> well uh we i got here and we decided that before we leave we're not really sure that the motor's okay in the car so we were gonna like try and fix it real quick and uh before we didn't even take it out of the trailer we just opened the oil filter and it was full of bearing material and and uh monkey and mcdougall Looked were like standing there rush. yeah <laughs> <laughs> 300 ounces of gold. <laughs> the, the biggest pot ever. That's the biggest clean, clean out we've out. had. <laughs> yeah, where was fucking Schnobel or whatever that big <laughs> nose kid is? He would have fucking freaked out if he seen yeah. that. Well, yeah. Monkey was like, damn. He's like, this, is, this isn't good. And then he starts telling this you why. And he starts telling you the deal. And before and he gets done telling the deal, McDaniel's already got the thing no, taken apart. No, McDan no McDaniel and McDougal, he's like shutting the trailer up, and he's like getting in the truck. He's like, we're still going, right? And I'm like, well, the motor's like trashed. And he's like, yeah, we'll find a motor when we get down there or something. And I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, we're going. We'll hit a couple of uh, parts stores on the way. <laughs> yeah. So Get some of them sealed power bearings yeah. from the O'Reilly's. He's, like, he's like, it's Monday. We don't have to qualify till Wednesday, dude. We got plenty of time. I was like, we have 20 hours of driving we have to do in there somewhere, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of like what what and of course the whole time he's just ripping the motor apart when we're there ripping it apart in parking lots on the way and he's yes. you know he is race car uh he doesn't need a hotel room he stayed at the track he doesn't need he doesn't need any he just needs a little bit of uh i would like more food next time food <laughs> <laughs> he needs a very minimum amount of food i didn't get fat on accident <laughs> and the first couple of nights we were there he needed a couple of cases of water yeah uh, but yeah. once <laughs> two or three a day yeah <laughs> uh but so for the people at home who don't know who mcdougall is or doesn't care uh let's go ahead and bore them with a little bit of like who who he is why are you here well because of race car <laughs> <laughs> because because you there's several of them in the shop race car like you race car <laughs> yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself man i obviously little axe that describes me in one word <laughs> If you're he, not from he said, little axe. Listen, he said little axe describes me in one word. Uh, uh. That shows you a little bit about no, the education together. system. <laughs> it runs axe. together. It's all one word. It's like race car is not two words. It's one word. <laughs> all right. So how did you end up like here, though? Well, I think if we fast forward to the, the childhood stuff where me and Monkey <laughs> tore everything up. I mean, yeah. there's nothing safe. If it was put together, we took it apart. That's just how we work. <laughs> Fast or, you, or you broke it and then monkey helped you fix it yeah and he gave me the deal the whole time <laughs> yeah. he's like dude if you wouldn't have popped the clutch like that this whole lawnmower rear end wouldn't have fell out <laughs> he's like we talked about this yeah. don't pop the clutch because the first time that we actually <laughs> met you <laughs> man i love remembering shit <laughs> the first time that we actually met you was 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 pretty epic in itself so yeah. like 
tell, go through like how did you come up how did you get to street racing with the group of, in the 405 like how did and, this and come tell up? a little bit about that sweet ass fucking malibu that <laughs> malibu was up. legit <laughs> i wish i could have no, it back we know we know it was legit <laughs> so here i am with this 79 malibu i mean literally the biggest piece of crap on earth i didn't even pay money for it i got it in a trade deal <laughs> Hell no, you didn't pay no money <laughs> you for bartered it. you bartered that <laughs> shit. i bartered for it for a 95 mitsubishi gallant <laughs> So we end up with a race car. Me and Jason. Never that was a race car. Sort of. Sort of. Yeah, that was, was a race, race car. car. Okay. Okay. Go it ahead. Had a bolt on pro stock. Hood. Did you not see the hood? No, that I thing remember. Was a race car, and then yeah. he lightened it up by taking the whole front end off of it. No headlights. Yeah. No, no headlights. No one. grill. Yeah. No bumper. People on Instagram hate on me every day because I don't have headlights in my car yet, saying it's not a street car. It's not a street car. But yet, this guy shows up with not even like of stickers that look like headlights. Hey, just we didn't zero. Even say anything. We said, you going to make no, a pass? Was, and he was like, fuck yeah. I, I, was, I saw the car on that, whatever you could call that trailer he was pulling behind him. I thought, gee. mobile like, home. We <laughs> <laughs> just uh, strapped axles to the bottom of the car and pulled it. Yeah. 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 So we, we go to the track, me and Monkey, and uh, we, know, we know nobody. We've never been to the track other than drinking beer on Beer Hill. And this we was 10 years ago, probably. Yeah, 10 years ago. We didn't yeah, know every, a single person. Never heard of Midwest Street Cars. And we're out there hot lapping the shit out of this car. I mean, running out of gas halfway down the track. I mean, battery falls over and catches the car on fire. Lots of cool stuff goes down. And some kid, um, Str Stroker was his name. Remember that guy? Stroker? Yeah, I remember Stroker. Had the so, third gen Camaro. Yeah, the third Stroker. gen Camaro. He worked at... Uh, so he asked me, are you on Midwest Street Cars? Oh, I yeah, said, I what's remember. that? He goes, well, it's a website. I said, well, I don't got the internet in Little X. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so we... He's like, look, man, it's it's about street racing, and we meet up at, over here at the Sonic. I'm like, y'all street race up in the city? I street race all the time. I don't got nobody to race me. I mean, I we, run this, with myself. we run this thing up and down 180th all night long until the cops show up, and then we go to 192nd because that's a mile away. So we go to this, and he's like, be at the Sonic at 10 o'clock. Of course, I get there at 10 o'clock. Chief shows up at 3 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> you know, natural. <laughs> Talking about y'all ready? <laughs> yeah. We pull up. Of course, I have my company truck. You know, server's bed, this janky trailer we come up with, and a piece of shit Malibu. And I thought it was really nice. I didn't understand y'all had nice stuff. I thought everybody that street raced had a piece of junk like me. Well, yeah, because out in Little Axe, you and Russell Bauman and all them, they all yeah. had the same car. Yeah, we were legit. Like, <laughs> you guys I had were... the nicer of the couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was definitely the fastest. <laughs> So we show up, and Chief walks over. He goes, who are you? I was like, who are you? He's like, are you on the invite section? I was like, what the fuck's an invite section? Yeah, so for those that don't well, know, back in the day, we had a forum, and there was a secret section called invite only. And so whenever we would. a big deal. It was. And whenever big you'd deal. meet up, those guys that met up, they were all from that invite only section. So if you saw somebody new, the first thing you had to do is be like, hey, yeah. are, you on, are you on the invite? Are you invited? Well, it was like Fight Club. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, check me right there at the trailer. I was because, like, told you about Yeah, because I want to know who the fuck told him about what we're doing and how did he get here because he looks like somebody could get us busted in a hurry. Yeah, because like, he's going to be out there drinking. I'm super incognito. You know? He's going to be out there drinking and doing donuts. Yeah, you know? like crashing that fucking car. <laughs> he looked like he crashed it three times on the way there. <laughs> it slid forward and hit the front of the trailer. I mean, I was missing all the header and stuff. I mean, it had a four, four fucking foot pro stock scoop on the front, like a whale penis hanging yeah. off the front of this fucking Definitely car. Definitely different color than yeah. the rest of the, the, what, the car was like gold or something, gold with a gray front clip Fuck <laughs> yeah i mean i promise you when it come down to like spending money on the car you think does paint make it go faster does a front bumper make it go faster and all those things are no so you just don't buy those you're like but a better right. nitrous plate makes it go faster so you buy that <laughs> yeah. right or two of them or stack three them on of them i've done yeah. that yeah i mean yeah. that's just how you gotta roll right so so you're there you're invited but you weren't invited right so, so, really so chief for... checks me he's like <laughs> Who are you? You in the invite section? I don't even know what that is. I mean, he's like, I was on Midwest Street Car. I was like, I don't know. Somebody said that the other day. I don't know nothing about that either. I was like, but I heard y'all were street racing. He's like, well, I don't know about that. I yeah. Because like, it, we're trying, now we're trying to act like we don't know what he's talking about, but yet there's 10 cars in the, in the yes. parking lot with trailers. And, yeah. and but you could definitely look at him and tell he's not a cop. <laughs> <laughs> I had Russell with me with a get some tattoo on his belly and he wasn't wearing a shirt. So <laughs> drinking yeah. a Milwaukee's yeah. best. And it's two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, so he checks me for a little bit, gives me a hard time. Well, there was not, there was no telling him to leave because him and, and the guy with the get some tattoo and well, his brother, I mean, they're not the type that are just going to go, no, man, I get it. We'll, we'll try again next time. No, he's, yeah. he's, he's there to street race, God damn it. Yeah. And he's going to well, drove race. an hour to get here. That's an hour from the, my house. I mean, I wasn't leaving. <laughs> Probably had two, three flats on the trailer. Oh, yeah. It was a bad deal, man. Wasn't so, even long enough to get drunk. No. Yeah. 
So we get that all sorted out, and then we roll over to the spot, and they invite me to. Of course, everybody's super skeptical of my nice ride. <laughs> and Nobody was willing to he, race it. He looks me right in the face, right as I'm pulling up to the burnout box, and he's like, look, man, it's really foggy out here. The road's wet. If it gets out of shape, it's not worth it. I'm like, what? Yeah, because who are you racing? Stroker in that third gen. <laughs> yeah, the guy who told you to come out there. Yeah, yeah the guy who invited me. you. At this point, we're we're thinking that the guy who invited you just you're fixing to take out the kid that invited you out there. Yeah, so we were cool. Well, yeah, that was just part of the and game. And he had I a mean, nice third gen. You yeah. know what I mean? And and you had a a nice Malibu. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was definitely a Malibu. It was I a felt Malibu. mine was nicer than his. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe east of I thirty five. Yeah. I mean, nobody had a third gen out there. Never even seen one of those. <laughs> so. We pull up. He tells me if it's not, it's not worth it, man. If it gets out of shape, just get out of it. I'm like, okay, whatever. Well, because I can see this guy in his open face helmet, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, this dude here, he's not out here for the race. <laughs> he's out here for the glory. Like, yeah. and and where he races, there's not curbs yeah. and shit. Yeah, this like, guy's got something to prove. Like this guy, like this guy's fixing to have some fun. He's only going to be <laughs> in that car for a few seconds. He's going to make it fucking worth it, you know? Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, Jesus, that's all we need is some fucking idiot from little axe rolling his fucking junky ass malibu out here and yeah. god the cops would just be all over us then because there'd be beer cans and meth pipes everywhere yeah, and falling out of the car <laughs> as it was rolling yeah, yeah and then they'd like, run yeah you know because yeah. they're what are they who cares the malibu probably wasn't yeah, theirs anyway had no title and then we'd, we'd all be sure didn't <laughs> we'd all be standing there holding the fucking bullshit so yeah so we we go ahead and pull up do our burnouts we get to racing He's in front of me. I grab everything I got, multiple kits. You know, of course, they're like big shot plates stacked on top of each other. You know, it works great. One of them was upside down spraying out of the carburetor, not in the motor. <laughs> you know, my, my carburetor's base plate's backwards, so the choke corn's in the back, yeah. which I never knew that was a problem until like four years later. Henson tells me, what's wrong with your carburetor? I'm like, nothing. Why? Why is a choke tube in the back? And it works great. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, that's backwards. So I go home and all, you know, worried about it and change it. It never runs the same. So I'll just change it back. Yeah. The way it's been all it these years. It wasn't backwards, yeah. was it? It was fine. I think the car was backwards. Yeah. <laughs> well, Maybe we put the motor in backwards. I, I watched this first pass that you made, and it was it was something else, man. Oh, sorry. Hang on, guys. Sorry. Uh, we got we to gotta take a quick pause here. Um, in case you guys didn't know, I'm running a little low on the fundage. And, uh, oh, you this, know, this deal don't pay for itself. No, this podcast thing actually costs money. And uh, so... I'm going to have to stop you right there for a second, and then uh, I'm going to have to uh, give a shout-out to uh, the people that are helping me pay for this. But, I mean, there's people that make this deal happen. Yeah, and, and uh, this is uh, – so, yeah, uh, if there was ever a time to sell out, it's now. Do you love books? I do. But find that you never have time to read them? Well, Audible.com has the perfect solution. Get audiobooks and listen to those books you've been meaning to read while you're on the go. At the gym, during your commute, Audible.com provides over 180,000 titles from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazine and newspaper publishers, and business information providers. I mean, and their apps are free. It works on iPhones, iPads, even Androids and Windows phones. I mean, you can download and listen to your Kindle Fire and over 500 MP3 players, and you and unlike a streaming or rental service with Audible, you own the books. Audible. Yeah. Sean needs with more Audible, books. Yeah, I need, I need more books instead of listening to them. I need to read them. <laughs> you own your books, so you can access your books at any time, anywhere, right from your smart, smartphone. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like this is going to be a big thing for our listeners. They're big readers. They you are. Know, they are. They but, are. I mean, and little, they got plenty of time. McDougal, what about Little Axe? Big readers out in Little Axe? Yeah, yeah. this would be Lots good for them, right? Audible.com also has the great listen guarantee. If you decide that you don't like the book that you chose, no worries. People in Little Axe, you can exchange any book you aren't happy with for another title anytime, no questions asked. That is the great listen guarantee. And it's, I mean, it's like Walmart. They'll take it back. <laughs> I mean, in all seriousness, we travel a lot. And when you got kids, or kids, you know, they sit in the back seat, download their favorite book. Aiden loves, uh, he loves all the Lord of the Rings, all that type of stuff. And he downloads them. He sits in the back and he listens to them. And it's a great, it's great to keep him occupied. Does he download them on audible.com? He does, man. Not on his Kindle. 
He has an iPad. Ah. Well, just for listeners, Audible.com. McDougal's looking at me like, wow, this is really <laughs> happening. The Malibu and just for listeners, Audible.com is offering a free 30-day trial membership. Go to audible.com slash Chief and Sean today and start your free trial today. Again, show your support for the Chief and Sean show and get a free 30-day trial at audible.com backslash Chief and Sean. Okay, so uh, there's going to be a lot of that because uh, you know we're because trying to. Because it costs money to do this. Yeah, and it, we're just we're just going in the hole here. I mean, every day. So uh, that's what she so, said. You know, <laughs> so who knows? I mean this this is going to help us keep the podcast going and keep it free and keep us on the air. So you know, big so shout out, out to uh, Audible dot com. Right, yep. I know that I uh, am going to start maybe looking into more books online now because of this deal. Hopefully. I don't Keeps know. them occupied. Yeah. Anyway, go check it out. All right. And so back I saw to... this pass that you made, <laughs> and let me tell you, it was less than stellar. And <laughs> what do you mean? You used I, the whole road. I was sawing that wheel like it owed me money. No, I saw that. Yeah, you was definitely jerking that wheel back and forth. Yeah. I mean, ran over the flashlight and everything. There were some obstacle illusions. Obstacle illusions. <laughs> yeah. For, for you, it was like yeah. foggy inside else. my windshield, and I couldn't see that well. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have no windshield wipers or dome lights no, or headlights. Face helmet, you know, I've, fogged up. I've, I've, <laughs> I got that from Get Son's dad. I've never seen so many people scared for the curb at one time. <laughs> like everybody there was just like worried to death that he was gonna just kill these damn well, curbs. Four foot past that curb is a bunch of power line poles. Yeah, and that is really the only thing that I was concerned with. Oh, dude, he did went right he, through hey, those. I thought he was gonna bring them down. <laughs> Not me. I wasn't concerned to lick. No, we yeah. saw. We saw you. That was the I last time control. the the guy who was running the big end that night wasn't Russ. Russ usually runs the big end, but that night it was Shane. Yeah, Paul he Shane. didn't. He didn't uh, want to yeah. do it anymore. And plus, After you ran that, over his flashlight. He made me yeah. buy him a flashlight. <laughs> you, had, you, you actually bought him a new yeah. flashlight? He was mad about dude, it. Dude, it was a nice flashlight. It's like it, a snap-on something or another. Yeah, and, and he and and ran that dude right over. He did. mows the flashlight over, kills the flashlight. he's still in the throttle. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know. Like, yeah. that was, I mean. He was part of The race wasn't was, over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did you win that race? No. <laughs> I tried though. Yeah, Believe no, that. Hey, it wasn't from a lack of effort. I, I promise gave you. Gave it hell every every last second of that pass. I was in the gas. Gave it hell and all the nitrous you could. You every could bit get. that it would spray through two cheater plates. And since then, Shane hasn't done the big end again. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you ruined it. You yeah. ruined it. See I what happens. He hasn't been around when much. you let people from East of I thirty five party with you. They ruin it. So <laughs> there's actually a sweet video of that car at the track. Yeah. That I've seen. Is there really? Yeah. Uh, and, and it. It actually broke an axle. <laughs> yeah. Th this was where Monkey was telling me the deal. It was when we first got the nitrous. And he said, look, he goes, I don't really trust that rear end because, mind you, we took his 100-foot extension cord on a 110 MIG welder and MIG welded a leaf spring rear end in a G-body, which was you a can't, car. You had can't. a leaf spring? No, you no, it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta see the. You guys put a leaf spring on that car, no. or you took a leaf spring rear end. Well, you know, like yeah, welded you, on the. You can't do that because that's it's what cast. they did, though. It's cast. So we had to build some old filled tubing that Monkey found, go up over the rear end housing, and then we found two pieces of pipe, and we welded those two pieces of pipe as the eyelids. And then we'd wrap duct tape around the bushing yeah. because they were bigger. Somebody in Little Axe is missing their gate because <laughs> yeah. of this car. Yeah. Damn. So we made that work, and the monkey was worried yeah, about it. Worked. And he was like, man. Have you ever seen the pictures of it? There's fucking uh, pictures of that rear end in that car. Unbelievable. I've never, to this day, I, I still can't imagine that monkey would ever have anything to do with it. And that. it held hard, uh, you know. We were going to brace it good up. Enough to get around to it. It held good enough to break the axle. Yeah, it, it went low tens like that. No problems. Yeah, and then Monkey drove it one time, cut it on fire. Burned the whole car down, a thousand foot doors open, <laughs> smoke rolling out. I mean, literally fire coming out of well, it. It's a good thing he could get out real quick with no seatbelt on it. Yeah. No door bars or seatbelt. <laughs> so you yeah. got rid of that car? Yeah, I had to sell it. That sucks. You man. sold it. Somebody yeah. bought it? <laughs> Actually, if you want to know the truth. <laughs> no, he goes, yeah. No, no. I traded it. Oh, what did you fuck this guy out of? For a center section for Baron's Cutlass when I first got it from You Flip. traded the, the, a whole race car for a center section? I kept my 6AL. He didn't get that. <laughs> oh, man. God. So I traded him for a center section because I got that Cutlass from Flip and I needed a center section. And 
Yeah, the the cutlass that Baron has now. The yes. one that Baron ended right. up with. Yeah, yeah, the one that that we bought for Flip and then Flip, Flip sold, sold to it me. to you under the table and didn't <laughs> yeah. tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, he was like, us. he was like, yeah, don't tell those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, wow. aren't they going to see it when I take it out? And he goes, well, maybe they'll forget by then. Don't yeah. worry about it. Good old Flip. Yep. Uh, so, so what? So now, but now you're working. Back then, you were a, a generator mm -hmm. mechanic or something, generator. and you. Uh, they, got fired yeah, they, from that. Yeah, to get give yeah. that job up. Yeah, pulling your race car on the track yeah. and street race with a company truck. It there were some issues. Right, and then there was other issues. <laughs> there yeah. was. And I, I heard ended, about some like, issues. And then you ended up taking you know taking uh, a little time off of a race car a fellowship. You went to yeah. the fellowship for a little while. Yep. Come yep. back from there and refreshed <laughs> and ready to race car. Right. Yep. And then and, uh, I realized you got I, a lot of time to what, when I thought about <laughs> to read books. I had all this time. <laughs> did you ever get on Audible dot com? Well, if you my flip known phone about that I had snuck Audible. in com. my shoe didn't have audible.com. Oh, you if can't. you would have known about it, though. If I'd have known. It's weird because if you would have keistered, if you would have keistered a decent phone, it works on um, iPad, iPhones, Android, Windows. It works on everything. Well, it should have worked. I wouldn't have tried Not it on your flip Android. phone, though. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my but flip phone wasn't working. You got back from there. Now you're building race car engines Correct. every day. Correct. You are you a are race car. Well, explain I, to me why. Hang on. Explain to me this race. Explain, explain the race car thing. Explain that because it's tough for people to understand when you talk and you say things like you're a race car. You sound like my six year old. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people are look at you like, Oh, this What's guy's special. You? But we're used you know to it. I mean? by that, now, it's so a we good don't thing. Think anything no, of it. but they look at me and they're like, man, chief, you're a good guy for taking that guy to the races and stuff he, with you. Yeah. you know he's giving mean? him like four you know? cheeseburgers. They're day. like, they're he's like, a nice man. guy. That, and then they're like telling their buddies, like, that guy over there thinks he's a fucking race car. No, like, really. I mean, he, he said really he has tires. He's a race car. <laughs> What's the deal with that? Man, there's just nothing else. Like, I, everything I do, I do it 100%. There's a reason, like, I can't hunt anymore because I did it too much. Yeah, so, no, you tried to extinct yeah. the population of deer in right. many states. So, so then, the they me, then they tell me I can't hunt no more. Even so, like pet baby deer. <laughs> I had to refocus my energy into race cars. And it's it's curbed my addiction of the deer. So, therefore, sort of. that's why like I don't do drugs because if I did Very drugs, much. I'd be really good at it. Like, yeah. I would do it too much. You'd take it all the way. Yeah, I would be a drug. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so so you you used to be an avid deer hunter. You were an outdoorsman type. Yeah. yeah. I was a deer. <laughs> <laughs> then I became a race car. And then so you were so good at being a deer that they wouldn't let you be a deer anymore. No, they took that. People really? came in and wouldn't allow you to be a deer anymore. They were yeah. why were they were they uh, intimidated that you could become a deer or what was the problem? I think there? so. I think that was jealousy. <laughs> It was jealousy. It was jealousy. Because, well, I mean, it's weird, though. Like, I know that you've you've told me before, like, kind of how many deer that you've uh, came into contact with or whatever, All of them. allegedly. <laughs> All like, of them. but it's it's weird because, like, they, you're not, you're, you only have a certain amount that you can, um, you, you can wipe off this face of the earth. And your amount is a lot, was more than that at yeah, one, like 10 or 15 times that. Yeah. So, how is it that you were able to deer so much? That's all I did. <laughs> because he was deer. I was deer. <laughs> like, day and night, he was deer. I would have a panic attack if I left the house without a gun in my truck. Like, it would, like, make me have anxiety attacks. I'd be like, Shh. Because you were but scared But what if I what? seen a deer oh. <laughs> and I didn't be able to capitalize on this opportunity? Like, so, so did you, like, hang out with deer? Like you do race cars? Yeah, I don't have any friends. Like, they were just deer. Like, that's the only people I cared about being around. So, it, I mean, <laughs> no, it's, I, like, it's public I, record. Uh, like, I there was a billboard made after you at one time uh, like, because you were thing. so like, deer. Like, how y'all are race car and got me race car. Like, I had friends when I was a kid that were deer also. And then but they not got, like this. Not no, like they you were, deer. Like, no, they were deer, They were the same too. deer as oh, you. They, they were deer. same. Really? Yeah. That's they a, they showed a, me the ways of deer, and then I got carried away. <laughs> And naturally, if you're going to you do something. you overcame their deer. <laughs> and you started growing fucking deer. antlers. Is what yeah. okay. I mean, if you're going to do something, do it. Yeah. All right. An estimate here. Help me out. Because I'm not a big hunter. I don't really. I've never killed a deer on purpose or anything like that. So, like, how many, how many fucking deer are we talking about here in your lifetime? Like, ever? Yeah, in your lifetime. In your like lifetime. Deer. Give me an estimate. A lot. <laughs> I feel like it's a big number, buddy. <laughs> I feel like it's a big number. Like, a really big number. 
more than I should have. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Because, I mean, you, they, they made you stop deer. Yeah, and you <laughs> haven't deer now for how long? What are you, a cop? <laughs> Wait a minute. What are you getting at? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we'll strike that question well, from the record. I, I, uh, I withdraw that question. Okay. But you deered so much, like you're not even allowed to have a weapon anymore. You're not allowed to, you're not allowed to have a gun anymore. Yeah. Because I they're mean, afraid what you'll do with it. Right. No, it, Cause it he's wasn't. Deer. I mean, they said I couldn't even have a big knife or anything. I mean, it oh, says you that. deered that bad. Yeah, it says I can't have spears, bows, <laughs> large knives. You can't even have like a rock tied to a string because you'll deer. Shots. None of it. Really? Nothing. <laughs> can't be trusted. You because you already can't be trusted. Now we have established right. that. Justin yeah. McDaniel yes. is a can't be trusted. Um well, I mean that's that's why the race car thing's so good because other than the street racing aspect and obviously that can cause some problems, it's really fairly legal. I mean you might be broke. Yeah. But at least you're not breaking the law of being race car. Yeah. <laughs> Well, not very much. <laughs> not all, not the all the time. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes, but, but, but a lot so of the times. So you've harnessed your deer energy and your deer spirit, and you've 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 harnessed this. You've controlled it. You've yep. calmed it down. But you've now you've focused it on cars racing. Right. And now you're a fucking race car. Correct. And what does that mean? That's all I do. Like I, I that's my job. That's my hobby. That's what I look at on my phone at eleven o'clock at night when I'm not sleeping. That's what I text all my friends about. If you text me about anything other than race cars, I probably won't respond. If you text me green, I'm definitely not responding. Yes, yes. And, I mean, there, there's a big reason why I don't do green, because those people might try to send me a race car video, and it will okay, be blurry. Okay, when you're talking about green, you're talking about <laughs> anyone that doesn't have an iPhone. Yeah, outside of the like, outside like, a, like an Android or a, like a Google phone, anything. Right. Like, and they yeah, text you, it's green. It yeah. has to be blue. And the whole reason that you don't te- you don't fuck with green. Period. You won't fuck with green people. You won't and the whole re- <laughs> and the whole reason is because of what now? The fear of them sending me a video <laughs> that it looks like I got taken with a potato. So yes. you, of a race car. Of a well, race they, car. They would have to email it to you. Yes, yeah, I don't do that either. I don't even check those. I got like three thousand of them. Well, who can check those when you're a race car? Right. Yeah. You don't have time for that. You don't have time for that. Okay, so everything in life mm-hmm. is race car. Yes. Well, the wife don't like that so much, but. She tolerates it fairly well. Your, but your wife is married to a race car. Yeah. She has to get used to it. Yeah. It's tough being married to But 10 years ago, she married a deer. So <laughs> she, she has learned to understand does, does my like, problem. Does she like the race car better than the deer? Uh, usually, we'll see, the deer thing was usually while she was sleeping. The race car is like for weeks at a time. Yeah. So, like, I'll just disappear to Georgia for a week. And yeah, but you're not going to get in the trouble that you got in while you were a deer. Oh, you rode around with Jeep? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's, there's, there, yeah. It's a little... Yeah, Sometimes they ride on the shoulder at 105 mile an hour while we're texting and watching yeah, a movie. Yeah. I mean... When you're with Chief, there's a lot of trouble that could happen. Uh, you never have to worry about deer, though. I keep my shoes on. Yeah. I mean, you never know. <laughs> you might have to run. <laughs> so, so your wife, which she's been around this this uh, stuff for a long time, and she knows all of us, and, you know, she she's uh she's been out to the races and she's done the race car stuff and she's been around and she's like you know she's a part of it she was a big part of the website when it was around you know mm-hmm. and um I, she surely though that she didn't think that you would become a race car like no, she, she knew that you liked race car and she knew she that knew you it. did race car but how does she feel that now that you've actually <laughs> turned into a race car well, she knew i was a race car back when it was just me and monkey like, I didn't even have race car friends. Like, it was just me and Monkey. And I didn't even have, I had, like, a razor that was green. And I didn't even text because I was scared of the green then. So, you know, it's been an addiction. I say an addiction. It's just a lifestyle. I mean, it's just what you do. I mean, being a car guy, at least at my level, I don't even have a car and I'm still a race car. You don't need a car. You are a race car. Correct. If you if you become race car like I like I make sure everything I touch goes faster, I I think about it, I study it, I look at it, I try to understand it, I watch what other people are doing and then take what they're doing and try to apply it to what I'm doing, and I take control of people's programs. Like I'll just like walk up and be like, hey, yeah, we're gonna have to put some time in that. It looks like suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like I don't have the personality to just be part of a crew and. And hang out and watch people do things. And like, oh, yeah, I'll air up your tires. Yeah, yeah. Like, you don't. And that's like like this whole thing of becoming a race car. Like, you you couldn't be into, like, 
football or baseball because then you have to watch someone else's someone else's life and know right. their statistics and watch them be good at what they want to do right. and and you're just while i'm sitting on the couch thinking about man i wish i played football r- right like there's like that's a hobby to some people though right. a hobby to some people is actually sports is a hobby they don't play them right they just follow sports and they wear the shit and they they think that they can become a sport but like you have like you can't do that you have to actually race car like when we went to georgia you came with us to georgia like you couldn't leave the track because that's where the race cars were. Right. I felt like I owned them. Like when we, yeah. <laughs> you were yeah. one of them. Like when we, like right. when we went, to I would the, sit in the golf car for hours and, and watch the race cars, make sure nothing happened to it. Well, every time I showed up, you was already, you know, knee deep up in, you know, chief's race. Well, car. Yeah. It was a piece of junk. Yeah. Do all kinds of stuff to it. <laughs> yeah. But that was always, but it and, seemed, and our program is really good for you because there's always something to, to yeah. get done. I mean, we got your car <laughs> and his motor. I mean, you're busy. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it seemed like, so that you have a better time when, when when there's lots of problems when there's race car problems well yeah because i don't like to sit in a chair and think about man sure wish i was those guys over there race car and like i would end up over there <laughs> those guys those guys are rebuilding that tranny over there yeah i mean i'll be honest if we got there and you didn't have any problems i probably would have been over in some nice no, guys pit putting fishing you, putting pistons in you did you yeah i would help the, you, after the pass you checked the oil filter you said hey man i think we're good I'm going to go race car somewhere else for a little while. And he yeah. left me to go race car with someone who was race car because we weren't race cars. Yeah, no. you, you hadn't hurt no. nothing, so we those guys had a piston to put in, so we went over there and put a piston in. Race car. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, that's just what I do. Everything. Well, yeah. Everything. See, All the time. He's and way, that's why I've, way more race car than I that's am. That's why I've amassed so many good friends. I mean, like James Goat, great friend. <laughs> Yeah, Chuck. I mean, me and him get along great. What you about really don't that get along old girl with from anyone. Texas? Oh yeah, she's, she's yeah, Shannon she's Morgan. another engine builder. Shannon. Me and her get along great because we yeah. share techniques and the way yes. we do things. We get along great. See, yeah. uh, for those of you that are listening, uh, that's a lie. Those are lies. That, that, that's all. Lies. Uh, no one likes Justin McDaniel. Literally, like uh, no one. He's been banned a lot of places. He gets banned from everything. Every website. He's every too race car. Yeah, I mean he. People don't like my the pushy only, ways. Hey, he's troll. He's too. He's the, the biggest troll. troll on the internet I've ever seen, and it's so. It's awesome. Bad. It's awesome sometimes, but sometimes it's just like people get them mad. Right. He needs something to race car, or else he trolls on the what, it, on well, the internet. He's been race car so much lately that he hasn't trolled a whole lot. I know, but correct. you can tell when he starts trolling. This he morning, needs some race car to do. This morning, I was trolling, and I, I thought to myself the exact same thing. Man, yeah. I really need to get to Memphis. Yeah. There's some shit to fix out there. Yeah, <laughs> there's some shit well, to fix out there. <laughs> and, and by trolling, you've made you've pissed a lot of people off. Yeah, I'm blocked from a lot of things. Yeah, I like, mean, when we pulled into Georgia, like I felt like we were gonna have to put him up on the project so that he could sleep. Like <laughs> he, like, like I was telling him, I was like, man, I'm sorry, dude. It was kind of late notice. Like we don't have an extra hotel room, and he's like, well, the race cars aren't leaving the track though, right? And I'm like, no. He's like, well, okay, I'm here then because. Yeah. I'm. St- I go with the race cars. Just bring me some food. Yeah, he said, bring me some food, and he found a place to sleep with the race cars. And there were some guys making possum three trailers down that shared. And so I yeah, some was that legit? Did you really eat possum there? Me and monkey both did. Monkey ate it like ate the gristle out of the knee joints and stuff. <laughs> oh, my, oh, oh my, my god! god. Yeah, there was like the oh. there was the roof oh. of a. I wouldn't mouth. even know that that's a thing. Oh. Out of their knee joints. Oh my god. <laughs> no, he had like their little knee joints. He's biting the gristle out of it. <laughs> I was like, man, I can't go that bad, but I'm hungry. And I like scrape some of the meat off with a fork and like mix it with the rice they had, and I ate that. You ate possum. Wow. Well, yeah. I mean, okay, well, you're The guys that took guy. me didn't bring no food, so <laughs> we had to make do. There was possum being cooked, and we, we thought was you hungry. just needed race gas. Yeah, we didn't know that but you But see, that's, that's the cool thing about having a wife like mine. Is before I left, she said, are you getting a hotel? I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, well, make sure you bring a pillow and a blanket so you can sleep in one of the trailers. She thought I was yeah. just going to sleep in one of your enclosed trailers. That's where the race cars go. She thought go. it was normal because that's she where... didn't even think. No, she just well, wanted to make those sure guys I had aren't going to get you a motel. Oh well, no, she didn't think that. Well, yeah, no, exactly. Because that, those because are expensive. She knows that your race car. Well, race cars go in the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> well, so. when I got to the hotel the last day when we were leaving, y'all didn't have no hotel. Y'all had like suites with bedrooms and kitchens <laughs> and yeah. nice, weren't they? Yeah, I was like, it dude, was, these guys. Yeah, you got living it up. You got to sleep in a hotel that one night. Yeah. Yeah, that was nice. Did did it run you? 
Well, it's a good thing it was over because I wouldn't well, the, the car. Stayed. But we had taken the cars with us that yeah. day. That was the, the only way we could get him to go. The so cars we were, were at that. No, I mean, we couldn't way. leave you at the track because we took the cars. From the time we left that Monday till we come back like three weeks later, whenever that was, because <laughs> it all blended <laughs> together. <laughs> Seemed like three weeks. Like, I don't think I ever left that black trailer with the white car. No. Yeah, the, I, I was with yeah. the whole The time. only time that you left the car was whenever we made you leave the car and we went to, uh, we were in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. The car was, uh, the motor was out of the car. You had got the motor, you and Monkey got the motor out of the yeah. car. Monkey Bros were in full effect. Car was ready or, you know, motor was going to the machine shop to get fixed. And, uh, we decided to go and try and relax a little because we knew what the week was going to bring and we were going to have a beer at a little local establishment called the, the Creeping Owl, Owl. The Owl's Nest. Owl's Nest. Yeah. It's in close. like, uh, in like, etheridge tennessee or something and we go in there and of course there's no race cars in there he was the only one <laughs> and so but he made sure and found conversation with these guys and made them race car yeah like, that's what we talked they didn't even know what race cars were <laughs> and we made sure we had that conversation and i was sitting there playing pool with monkey and justin mcdaniel was over there race car and with these guys like full on like he was telling them he's a race car and what's cool is like crazy old weirdos in the owl's nest in etheridge tennessee they don't even look at you weird if you tell them i'm a race car well, that's because that guy had a tinfoil hat on he did he, he had a whole mask he had a tinfoil I mask think that guy okay, was a kkk so he was I a something that, that he, he was a he something. believed anything that you tell him. but when he stretched his hand out to give you knuckles and tell you who he was like mcdougall here goes i'm a race car like that's what he that's what he said and the guy was like right on you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so sometimes you got a race car yeah, i don't know. You know i looked so. over at Satan's aluminum hat and i was like <laughs> I was like, what is that? And he goes, well, that's in case people start talking about Hillary Clinton. I can put it on, keep bullshit from penetrating my brain. And that's what he said. Nice. And all of us went, oh, my God, this is fucking yeah. weird. But not race car here. Race no, car, he, was, cool. he accepted him because cool. he's a race car. And <laughs> yeah. that guy's a, you know, crazy person. So yeah, I was like, hey. They were just Not good. a bad idea. Not a bad <laughs> <laughs> How's that been working out? <laughs> yeah. He's like, I can get that guy up here that talks all that crazy stuff. I was like, oh, it'd be all right. We can just talk. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, you need a, you need like your own shirt or something that says I'm a race car. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I feel, yeah. I feel like it. sometimes I'm a little bit aggressive with it. I mean, it makes people not like me so much. I mean, but the good thing is most of my really good friends are also like me. So it's really not an issue. Right. And people that aren't like me end up not liking me and I didn't well, like and them that doesn't anyway. matter anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, like Chuck, like he don't like yeah. me at all. Yeah, yeah, you and Chuck. How come Chuck, you and Chuck don't get along? They hate each other. He tried to talk on me any which way he wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> we had a few issues. That was this one time. He tried to what? He tried to what? Say that again. <laughs> he tried to talk on me any which way he wanted to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you don't talk on McDougal how you, you want. You can't talk on well, you, huh? See, Chuck's a lot like a Chihuahua. He he barks really loud and expects to just scare you off. Well, when you stand there and you look at him like he's stupid, and then he's like, well, fuck, that didn't work. And then he gets all, like, serious about it, and you're like, Chuck, seriously. So I'm going to beat you up. <laughs> I'm like, well, I mean, you know where my shop is, and I probably won't leave till after five. So I yeah, can you were come gonna, to your shop, or you, you were, can come to mine. You guys were actually going to fight. No, we were going to fight. You Luckily, fight. cooler heads prevailed, and we didn't, because obviously my boss likes Chuck, and then they called each other, and then... My boss talked me off the ledge of, of putting him in a chokehold. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, cooler heads prevail. And we tolerate each other. I mean, I think it's a known issue that neither one of us really like each other. But, you know, we go and we wear his car and I leave him alone. He leaves me alone. And, well, yeah, you got to be in the same place with some of these people. Yeah, like I'm not the kind of guy that's going to show up and just try to fight everybody. Well, you, you know? would if there was no race cars, probably. Probably. If but we went if out to a street race well, and there was no race cars. Like, then you'd be fight. I'd, then you'd yeah. be fight. Then you would fight. You would <laughs> then, be fight. Then I'd be fight. Yeah. But but since there's race cars around, you don't even care because you're a race I'm car. <laughs> I'm busy because <laughs> there's race car shit going. Yeah. on. Yeah, I mean, we were operating a nitrous car. We had like pistons to put in and <laughs> yeah. things like that. I yeah. mean, there's other shit going. And down. now you and James go the Reaper the guy drives the mm. Reaper car. You guys are mm. Uh, mm. there's some hit. Mm. why help me out because we don't even know. We just know that we see you all out in public and you hate each other. What? What is the problem well, with I you think, and the Reaper? I really think it's... Because the Reaper, is, is he a race car too? No, he's he not. He says he is, but he's definitely not. <laughs> you, as a race car, can see through his bullshit. Yeah. He's got a whole crock of bullshit. He puts a bullshit cloak on <laughs> and says, I'm a race car, and he is not. Okay. 
So like, what's the problem there? Why do you guys hate each other so much? I don't because, really hate him at all. I think he's hilarious because he gets so serious. But you troll him on I a do. regular basis. But he chase. makes it you easy. Troll him. You he, troll him all well, the time. Well, he gets mad because you troll. Well, like, And you troll because he gets mad. Well, I think <laughs> deep down inside. So, so like, it's, it's, you know. <laughs> well, like he's over there like cycle. stewing like he's thinking about stabbing me with a screwdriver. Well, and I felt like And I'm over there to. laughing because I've got him so mad he's wanting to quit street racing. Like right. he literally like wanted to quit and leave. Yeah, because you can't fucking you can't just be normal through a driver's meeting because you're a race car. Well, they're so, all like so being when everybody's gay being normal, <laughs> when everybody's in a driver's meeting, you have to troll. Well, they were like, "Oh, I've been here for so long." I'm like, "Go, you ain't been nowhere. You've been here three weeks longer than we have. Why don't you shut the fuck up?" You know, so, talking about so how that, he's like, "Oh, my boy Sean over there. Fuck you and your boy Sean." You don't get both of you whooped if you keep talking like that. And then I, <laughs> and then I find out it's this Sean. I'm like, oh, I'm just kidding. Not this Sean. This Sean's all right. He's race car. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Mean, Goat is. I so, mean, I mean really, at Cash Days, guys, I, at yeah, cash days, I thought y'all were going to fight. Like, no, he no, no, no. I don't think it's. I think it's an episode that hasn't happened yet. Oh, really? I thought it was Cash Days. No, there's an episode that hasn't happened oh. yet on the TV show. In the driver's meeting. About. When he he's the driver's up. meeting. It was that, pretty serious. That they get into it pretty good. they got into it pretty yeah so yeah. that's that's we can leave it at that yeah no, okay it will right. it will be on tv there's right. no doubt in my mind eventually if, if he continues street racing which i doubt <laughs> i mean that's just not him but if he does <laughs> have you seen him race it's terrible he i mean he he went up the list he beat some people who'd he beat he beat some folks shane shane's he, the only one that he beat that was a decent guy at the time shane beat henson though right he Shane did. beat me that one time. Shane beat Sean too. Shane ain't never beat me. He ain't never beat <laughs> He ain't never beat me neither for the record. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, like go to the only thing that irritates me about him is he's literally so arrogant that he thought that the list was beneath him. That he was gonna show up and run the entire list and be a top one, two, or three car. Yeah. And yeah, he's very. He, he was he very did. confident. He was he very did. confident. I mean, that that was the thing about him is I I just wanted to like shake him and say, look, man, like I understand you want to be fast, but five O's is not fast. <laughs> just I want to shake him and tell him that. Well, a lot of people don't understand too that like they raced back in the day or they've raced before oh, or they yeah. street like, raced like whenever, Varley's day. You know, I mean, and like, like an eight second car was they, hauling ass. Well, they they just look at the car and they go, I've got enough car. You know what I mean? And and uh i've got i've got enough money i've got enough car and and i got a truck and a trailer and uh, i'm gonna go up this fucking list and and that's what they think and then of course they forget about the whole reason that we street race and that is anything can happen anything. it doesn't matter how much money you have sometimes anything. sometimes it doesn't matter how smart you are it doesn't matter how good of a race car you are sometimes all that matters is that you're night and you won't be beat you know yes. and that's the part that a lot of those guys don't ever get and so when they come out there and they're so cocky and they're like no I'm going straight to the top because they've seen these other guys make passes and they're like, I can beat all of these guys. But then they forget being a race car is tough. It you know is. what I mean? It's, and, a, and, it's a rough life. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sometimes the street is going to get the better of the race car. Yeah. I promise you it, it is beyond stressful to stand there. Let's say at Seminole the road looks beautiful. We've raced on way worse looking roads and you're standing there thinking, man, we could put some power down. Let's turn it yeah. up. And but you, you watch the guy right in front of you go whoop, blow yeah. him off, or whoop. And you don't whoop, get a whoop. test hit. Oh man! You know what I mean, in street racing, you know, you come right off the trailer and you race for all the money in your pocket, yeah, right? Every, then and Super Bowl there. every time. And e sometimes every race is yeah. the final. And you don't know what the streets like because you haven't been there for a week testing on it. You know right. what I mean? You don't know it what could the have changed from the night before. It hell, dude! It changes after man, one will, pass. I go back and stand next to Henson's car and look at that computer and and literally feel myself age. You know, like I can feel yeah. the wrinkles coming on because I'm like, man, like I, I can't be slow because we have a pro mod on the street. Yeah, you don't want to turn it down enough that you're right. going to get outran. But I can't be so fast that I knock tires off and get beat anyway. So I'm yes. over there looking at this kid. We got a race at 16 years old. <laughs> that that one didn't air yet, did it? No. Okay. No, that's well, anyways, the one where that was oh, my yeah. last. Yeah, 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 no. yeah, yeah. That's a big one. And, that one's anyways, one? anyways, you're you're over there contemplating what you got on your plate, and you're racing an out of state guy, and you're like, man, you know, we're already down three races, all that's left is you know yes. two cars, and we yes. have to win. We this have one, to win, and we have to win the next one to even win, to even win as a group. The, you can feel yourself age. 
But I watched in that same situation, I watched Go go over there and just rev his car up and rack the pipes in the gravel till everybody's covered in gravel dust and really think he's got something going on. He's over there just whoop pow whoop pow <laughs> And then he shows up and blows the fucking tires off. I'm like, well, I mean, did you look at anything? Did you take any data that you had before on a similar road and, and try to make that work? I mean, I tried to help him one night at a street race. I told him, I said, I know you're racing this guy. He's fast, and you're going to turn it up. But don't turn it up with that chassis tune-up. You're going to go left and hit the bars. Your bars are at 14 inches, man. They're eight feet long. You he, know all this because you're a race car. Well, I watched his last pass. He was he was on the verge of blowing you tires off because he went up your own hit. data. <laughs> yeah, I was watching him. Yeah. And I'm, you know, and I'm wanting him to do good. I mean, even though we don't really well, yeah, get along. Yeah, he's 405. Yeah, I want him to do good. So I'm like, hey, dude, I would probably take a little bite out of the car and lower them willy bars. You know, and I bet you can apply more power down low. Oh man, I was on all three and sixty foot. I don't need no help. See that, that he went up on the bars and went left, and that dude drove right around him. Like you're you're more race him. car than me because even if I noticed something like that, I, I probably wouldn't say anything. Well, see that that's my personality though. Like I don't just like crew no, you, with people. You and you and like, I want to own it. You and Monkey both, man. It doesn't matter what the hell's going on, who it is. You're over there helping. Well, I don't even care. If, I mean, Shane. I, I don't think Shane likes me either. But uh, you know, I would help him if I seen. One tire flat and the other one aired up, or he lined up crooked. I would try to help. I'd be like, "Hey, hey, hold on, he's crooked," you know. And yeah. but that's just who I am, and that's who my brother is, you know. And that all came from Bud Heavy, you know. He taught us. But that. wait, wait, who? <laughs> who? Please repeat that. Who? <laughs> Bud what? Heavy. Who's Bud Heavy? Well, that'd be the nickname that you gave Monkey and Mine's dad. <laughs> he don't drink Bud Light. No, no. Hell, no, he wouldn't no. drink that pussy shit. No. You can't get full yeah. off that. If you drink Bud Light, you end up having to eat dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you come from a long line of race cars or deers or, or whatever you're going to be. Or at least, you know, what the business is. <laughs> but. <laughs> I know you pretty well. I'm not even sure if I know what that meant. Well, like Mikey, he's going to tell you what the business yeah. is. And that's him and my dad are a lot alike. Yes. Very quiet, very reserved, don't have a lot to say until they start drinking. Both of them exactly the same way. That Once Jason starts drinking, it's He's going to tell you the deal. He's going to tell everybody the deal. You know, but both of them super intelligent, good at what they do, but they – they know the deal every time. Even if they don't know the deal, you're still going to get the deal. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's well, why every you time, can't argue with them because then time, they'll prove you that their deal is right. Yeah. Every time me and Monkey work together in a professional setting, like we've had jobs like where we punch a clock together. And like we end up fist fighting. Because I can't see you two punching a clock anywhere. We're very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we weren't real good you or anything. You can't punctual. <laughs> <laughs> But like you said, I mean, nothing cool happens that we got there anyway. Exactly. Hey, and that's what you said when you came with me for a week. Yeah. The the third day he was with me, he was like, this is one of the greatest trips I've ever taken. And I was like, why? And he said, because I haven't been late to anything. Yeah. Like, you know, because you're not going to be late because Justin's not down at the truck yet anyway. You know? Yeah. So it was great. He was like, he, he was just like, you guys just text me whenever we're supposed to be somewhere because I I just can't be late all day. He's just like, I just can't. This is the greatest <laughs> thing ever. We can't be late. I, I usually stress about being on time and know I'm going to be late anyways, but I would just turn my ringer on and go to sleep and figure, yeah, they'll, they'll call me when they get up. Yep. I mean, they ain't going to leave me. No, because you, cause you're a race car. I mean, yeah. I ain't got no other race car with yeah. them. <laughs> well, you you would wake up anyways once they start pulling out. Well, I woke up when the horse was going clippity-cloppity, clippity-cloppity. <laughs> I think we all kind of three got up, started texting each other, be like, "What was that?" Yeah. And are yeah. y'all hungry? Are y'all hungry? Yeah. Then we food. Then we yeah, food. It's time we, to food. Then we're gonna watch a movie, and then we went right back into race car and this other movie. Yeah, we missed out on the movie deal. I'm just race card. Uh, so now you're you're building race engines for a living at Henson Racing Engines. Yep. And um, helping Mike on the Plan B car. Yep. You, and you 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 crew chief the Plan B car for Mike Henson. Yep. I've been part of that for I guess three years now. Right, and it's had some uh, some serious success, and uh, the uh, the beefs that you have with some of these guys, while they're serious, and it's probably going to eventually turn into something more, as of right now, it's just kind of there. We just all know it. You just deal with it. You go yeah, race car. You don't worry about it. I avoid it. I mean, you know, there's no doubt when you walk by Goat, he, he's not happy about me walking by or anything, but we just function. I mean, I I don't think. 
is to a point where we're going to fist fight every time we see each other. As long as there's race cars there, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Right. I mean, right up until we race each other, like when that day comes. Oh, really? Gonna is that going to be bad? Oh, I'm sure, because I'm going to beat wait. him, and he's going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so you're, you're going to go to us uh, with us to Memphis and help us race car on the Crow Mad and uh, the Nova, the murder, murder car, as you call it? Well, absolutely. I mean, you're not going to run threes without me. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go. <laughs> yeah. To yeah. make that happen. Yeah. I mean, what if the bearings Somebody give may up? need to slide some new bearings in that rig. I mean, I in used between rounds. all the sandpaper we had last time to make the bearings fit. Uh, what about murder car? Oh, you have man. a lot of opinions about murder car. Oh, man. <laughs> that car. What? I what? mean, I know these listeners hadn't seen it up close, but jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so bad that the body shakes and, like, hits the cage and, like, dents the roof area, like, where the little <laughs> spike goes in. That's all bent up. And I'm looking at it like, what is that from? And the monkey's like, well, that's when he tire shakes and body <laughs> shakes off the cage and hits the <laughs> body i'm like why, why? why, why out a little yeah. yeah well I, yeah. I remember the first time that mcdougall come over to the shop and we were uh he was picking up something and we were doing something and the nova was on the lift oh and he walked in and he started looking under it and he goes man he goes this car is way cooler than i thought it was because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it looks well, like something he could have built yeah i mean you look at it and you're like damn that's a nice car on tv <laughs> yeah and then you like go to his shop and you're like, whoa, <laughs> you've been, I fast? like this car. How fast have you been in this thing? <laughs> this yeah. is perfect. This is yeah. Every right time I see own. him get sketchy, it really makes me worry for his safety. I'm like, and that's Man. bad. I, and I, mean, I worry you for worry it. for someone else. Yeah. I mean, Cause Sean bad. don't drive easy. Sean's not your like, you know, your goad where he's going to go down there and let out and lose. I mean, maybe here. this is why goad doesn't like you. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, Sean, Sean's like the kind of guy that's going to make it happen. Like he's going to be in the gas. Until he's either over the curb or over the line. Every time. That's what he said. Back well, hell when we was in Georgia, he said, I'm gonna crash this thing or I'm gonna win. One of yeah, the two. Sean's, Sean's balls deep yeah. in the driver's seat. And I know him well enough. He's a he's a race car driver. <laughs> like a, that's what he is. I'm not a race I'm not a full blown race car. No, no but a, he's a race car driver for yeah. damn sure. Okay, okay. I gotcha. I mean he's a race car driver. I mean I've yeah. I've I've been through some pretty sketchy shit in that car and if you tell me that I should have lifted, then I kinda feel like I may have fucked up. Yeah. I look at it sometimes and think, man, I don't know. <laughs> I look pretty sketchy. But so, he comes back with a smile on his face and usually win. I mean, that's usually how it works for him. Yeah, he, no, he, he's done really well with the car. I mean, you know? there, there was a point in time where we had conversations when I first got into the game that nobody ever beat him. I mean, nobody yeah, there could was, run 470. Yeah, there was it was a impossible. Moment, there was a moment there. There was a good solid uh, year there when people people really thought that he was just – Never going to be right beat. after the Ronnie Pace days. Yeah, yeah it right was like after. Ronnie Pace was like <clears throat> King Dingaling and then Murder Nova, and everybody yeah. was like, hey, That car's just, you can't beat it that. It works. Car. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not on the track, <laughs> it's a, it's but it good, works on the street pretty well. It's a good car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, and then that, that was the, that was kind of the, the turning point for the heavyweight street cars. That yeah. was whenever it went the other way because yes. we were all happy because the 3,600 pound Nova was king of the street. And, and wasn't beatable. Well, then all of a sudden we started to figure out that, yeah, it was, it was cool. He was faster than everybody because he had more horsepower, but right. now all of a sudden he's starting to have to deal with these lighter weight cars. And it was like, okay, we're getting lightweight cars now because yeah. people are just, you know, they would show up with a lighter weight car that doesn't make as much power, doesn't run it fast at the track, but it could do good on the street because it wouldn't have to pull any power out, you know, and right. that was kind of the, the turning point that was what start you know the sonoma that that's what brought the sonoma to the point that it's at yeah the whole reason the sonoma was what it was is because you know it was a heavyweight street car and and with, with a pro a, charger and yeah tried, it pro, tried to be it like tried murder to, nova. It's, it's had everything. it wasn't murder nova <laughs> no it and tried to Sha murder car yeah and then sean turns around and tells the owner that car that truck will never beat me right ever right i, I did i said that well <laughs> we owe a lot of how fast we all are today to sean's cocky ass <laughs> yeah. because he says things like that. So then the Sonoma came out, you know, and their plan was to make it lightweight with a big motor and, and, and you know, worked. and it worked and it did. And it was, it was, you know, it was tough to beat. And then, and Took yeah. It granted. yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think I, I, I owe a lot of my wins on the street to a cool head because I, I didn't care. Yeah. That, that was, was a, matter. that was a large I, part I feel of it. Like I, I, w I would never mess up. You couldn't do anything to throw me off my game. And Before my game was two, three o'clock in the morning. Dark street, you know, and and I knew what I was doing. Yeah, it was there. weird. Of all the guys I that was we, comfortable. of all the guys that we race card with, you know, Sean didn't have he didn't have that um, 
he didn't get nervous. He didn't, he wasn't he didn't get scared of the he wasn't he damn, damn sure wasn't scared of cops. He wasn't scared of getting a ticket. Wasn't scared of getting a car impounded. Wasn't scared of crashing. Wasn't scared of fire. Like he just he was just there to to street race to drive the car, just like you said. I mean, he was. Some of that stems from he's not super bright either. I'm yeah, well, he does. I remember, <laughs> I remember like flip flops and shorts, thinking I re- I didn't even know him, and I was like, I like that guy. <laughs> Like, he had Dickies and flip-flops on getting in a four-second car on I-35 on a service road. Right, with a with a 10-second cage in it. Not even that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the time, it damn sure was. That cage would probably hurt me worse than it helped me. Yeah. yeah. And I was thinking, man, like, me and Monkey, because we were quiet in the back. We didn't know y'all. We had just gotten the invite section. And then we started hearing about these street races. So right. Sometimes we'd leave the race car at home and just go watch. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I knew y'all we're scared of it, so I didn't bring it out all the time. Yeah, I definitely yeah, didn't we want were. to race that thing. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> want to bump into it, get yeah. cut or something. <laughs> yeah, get some shit. You so can't we leave it at home, on. and me and Monkey had rolled a town and watch y'all race. And I remember seeing him the first time and thought, man, that thing can burn out. <laughs> that thing can hey, burn out. Lower car can burn out. I'm pretty sure time stopped when you was burning out. Oh, it was so loud. It was yeah. the vicious. It, it was, was unbelievably loud. That yeah. was yeah. And then we and started... the backwards track and the king of concrete and that whole thing kicked off. I mean, when y'all invented no prep. I mean, because without a doubt, I, I feel like y'all kind of invented that. We we had a lot to do with it. Yeah, you know. We, I mean, there was the it's Chicago hard to thing, say. Yeah, but... it's hard to say exactly who invented the no prep because the Chicago guys had kind of came out with their deal around about the same time. But, you know, their deal was named King of the Streets, but it was at a racetrack. You know what yes. I mean? And but, but theirs was always like taking the light and, yeah, and was... just not prepping it. Yeah, and Boosted won uh, one of the first ones up there. Yeah. But, yeah, it was – but they, they, they were doing no preps pretty early. And then, um, you know, we, we were, were doing racing the, backwards. We were doing the, like full idiots. Yeah, we were doing the backwards track thing. Yeah, but like racing kinda, towards the starting line was, that was a cool. terrible idea. That was cool. It no, it was cool. All, I liked it. It kind of all stemmed from that same, you know, street race mentality. And, you know, we had the opportunity to do it somewhere else, so we tried it somewhere else. You know well, I mean? not only that. I mean, we go to the track every weekend, and there would be five, 600 people at the track. You throw a backwards track and 5,000 people showed up. And right. all of us stood there thinking, wow. Yeah, no bleachers. We're no, on to something. No bleachers, yeah. no concession stands. I mean, people just standing on the walls, yeah, on the back, was... standing on the roofs of trucks. It was yeah. just crazy. Because all the bracket racers are pulling out because they had a bracket race that day. And just mad. And we were just rolling in. Hell. And the line was backed all the way up to Noble trying to get in. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. I mean, it was just like, wow. And it's because we, you know, the people before us that made drag racing cool and what we think is cool about drag racing – we keep that, you know what I mean? We're not going to shy away from that. We're not going to, we're not going to go away from what we think is cool <clears throat> just because, you know, hundreds of people or rich guys or, or, you know, the a whole organization that, that controls drag racing in this country, just because those people don't like what we're doing or because they don't think it's cool or whatever. Like we don't care. We think it's cool. And so we do it. And And the thing about drag racing that made drag racing so cool was that, you know, the the cars and the nicknames and the personalities and the you know the difference in cars like there's a there's a there's always a difference in cars and what we do it's it's weird like you can go enter a class or you can go to a track or you can go watch bracket racing or whatever but when you come out on the street or you go to a street race or an no prep you're gonna see a multitude of different crazy ass cars with different nicknames and, yep. and drivers that have personalities and like you have somebody to to root for you have somebody to 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 go with and you know them from the websites or from social media you kind of know the struggles that they've went through to get there and so it's like it gives you this feeling of you know drag racing is badass again you know right. rather than oh well you know make sure you thank napa and and you know yeah. god and 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 then um titleist and Lucas then Oil. and yeah whoever else and then oh no we want to do we want a cobalt too everyone knows cobalt so let's get a cobalt and oh yeah. that one's red so ours is going to be red you know, kind of red. Yeah. We'll just do a black. Stripe. Yeah, we'll put a blue stripe. Yeah. And you don't want to say anything. You don't want to do anything different. You don't want to have anything. Yeah, you weird. don't want to stand out. You don't want to be loud because then people won't like you if you're too race car. Right. Yeah. If they you're too race car. Yeah. They won't like you at all. Right. Yeah. So a lot of that has is is leaving drag racing or has left drag racing. But now, man, all of a sudden, like people are bringing it back and it's a big deal again. And you got guys like, you know, I was just telling Keith Haney. I texted him just the other day and was like, hey, man, like, you know, I've known him for a long time. When I first met him. I didn't feel like he understood what was badass about drag racing. You know what I mean? Like he, well, no. he called me and, and he said, man, I've got a pro nitrous team and I want you to help me tune on the car and look at the car and, you know, go race car, you know? And I was, I just couldn't believe it. Cause I was like, holy crap, like, let's do it. This is going to be awesome. Yeah. 
But then when I when we didn't really mesh, you know what I mean? Like the team, because they were all, you know, like professional race car guys. Yeah. <clears throat> and like you're some and... thuggy ass fucking yeah, street racer. Yeah. And I'm over here like, let's bang it through the motor. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like yeah. let's fuck let's, yeah. Let's, yeah. Five yeah. kids. There's yeah. three bangs five per kit. Kit. Let's, let's bang let's, this bitch through the know, motor on the line. Yeah. Let's see if we can get in this guy's head, you yeah. know? And, and so it was a different type of deal. We didn't really mesh very well then. But then, you know, Keith Haney's been in this for a while now and, he's kind of come into his own thing. So he's like, so well, like, well, he's just kind of, I think he's maybe always got it or he maybe always wanted it, but he, he wasn't able to because of the company that he was, was you know, keeping and the, the things that he wanted to do in drag racing. You can't really be like us. You know what I mean? Because people won't, they won't accept well, well, you. You could put pull their money from you. Look how many years money. he raced that pro nitrous car. You could put that thing in a lineup and nobody even pick it out and tell you who's it was. You take that I new car, that Enigma car, and everybody's like, oh, that's Keith Haney's yeah, car. So exactly. now, yeah, so now you know, he's. now it's a big deal. It's got a name. It was cool. because well, he's, he's decided to, you know, re- get rid of all that, that, that worry of, of are these people going to accept me? Are these people going to think I'm cool? Are these people going to let me race them? Are they going to give me money? Are they going to sponsor me? You know, he's, he's released all that. Now he's just. Whoever the fuck he wants to be, doing whatever the fuck he wants to yep. do. And that's yeah. that is what makes drag racing cool. So him doing that and making videos and talking yeah, shit. Yeah, he talked so much shit before that race. And then he went out there. I'm just glad he showed up and, and back oh, today. Dude. Because he'd have been hey, it it'd awesome. a joke on him yeah. if he showed up and flopped. We, we I thought, was I thought it was awesome. I was excited when I saw him run that fast and number one qualifier. I was like I was just like, damn. Yes. Well that the dude I, did. I, I mean, look how cocky he was. He put on the window in you Georgia instead of putting his name Badass. on the window, he put you know my name. Yep. And what's fucked up about that is even if you don't know who Keith Haney is, if you see his door and it says you know my name, you're going to try and find out who that is because yeah. you feel like I should know this guy. Like, who who is this? And yeah. then after that, even if you don't know his name right then, you're going to find out what it is and you'll always know it. Yeah, and yeah. and then he did so I just thought that he was doing it because it was a part-time gig in the radio stuff. He could do whatever he wanted because the radio thing's not as controlled as, as some of the other stuff that he does. And it's not as handled and it's not as, you know, looked at and, you know, criticized. So I just thought he was kind of doing it because the radio deal, he can kind of be whoever he wants because it's radio. Like everybody there is kind of nutcases. It's almost street it's, type you know, environment. It, it's, it's a little bit different. The same you know? type Sounds of people. The same type of guys. Right. Yeah. So the same type of people you see at the radio race, you might see at a street race. Yeah. You might. Maybe you not with the same car, but right. the same type of people. So. And you I definitely could have, you definitely could have seen a bunch yeah, of them. Get <laughs> you, for two cars. Who's you, got two cars? You definitely could have seen a bunch of them 10 or 15 years ago at a street race because, you know, that's kind of the kind of, that's kind of the racing from. that they came from. So yeah. I just thought he was doing that. Well, then all, all of a sudden I hear that his new PDRA pro nitrous car, I mean, we're talking top level competition car here is the same type of deal. It looks almost the same. It, instead of Enigma, this one's called Notorious. It's got, you know, my name on that's it. It's got cool no name, sponsor shit all over it. And he's telling everybody he has the fastest nitrous car in the world, period. And everyone can basically suck his dick. And, like, that's a big deal because PDRA is kind of a big thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I'm sure there's a lot of guys looking at that going, you know, man, this guy's lost his fucking mind. Well, yeah, you got 18 millionaire stackers lined up. And those guys say, man, you should go over there with all he didn't even got one comp sticker on his car. <laughs> Not one. He didn't even have a Jag sticker how, on there. <laughs> how in the world is he gonna get contention money? Yeah. So, but he doesn't, dude. He's he's uh he's he's down to bring he's down to be a part of what made drag racing badass. And so you know, I good luck to him, dude. I hope he I hope uh, he yeah. kicks a bunch of ass. I hope he shoves without, it all down guys their fucking like throats. Him reinventing themselves, the NHRA, PDRA, NMRA, all that stuff will just fade out because. Well, eventually, those guys aren't interesting. Eventually, like if you're the not sponsors cool. are gonna are gonna go away because you can only find so many companies that are you know gonna give you money to drag race. That's that's gonna that you know is like a very strict don't say this type of company. Eventually, you're gonna have to get into some risky companies, and they're gonna go. You know how many people know who you are? You know what I mean? Are you what's your Facebook like? You know, and yeah. you know, you could be a badass drag racer, but your Facebook ain't gonna have shit, and your nope. social media ain't gonna have shit because no, nobody but your sponsor will because nobody gives a fuck who you are. But but you can download a book on Audible dot com. But <laughs> hey, <laughs> even if it gets that bad, you can always spend your time on the go yeah. downloading a book at Audible dot com. Over a hundred and eighty thousand <laughs> titles. From anything, anything you anything want, you want. There. Like you could read like. How to be a race car. Yeah. <laughs> they got that book. There's, there's sure. got to be a lot of race car books on there. Yeah. There's uh, no doubt. Anyway, hopefully drag racing becomes badass again. Yeah. And hopefully we are, we're a part of it. And well, and, and by the look of Ducks last race, 
it looks like it. I mean, you know, and it, it's cool to see people turn it into a family event again. Yep, and uh, this Memphis deal, we're going to Memphis March 17th to the 20th. Yeah, like soon. I think, taking, I, I think eight days. We're taking eight. our crew, and McDougal, we're taking him. He's a race car. We're taking mm, him. He's, he's a race I'll, car. I'll be at the trailer with the race cars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so if you see McDougal, just uh, you know, tell him, hey, man, you're a good-looking race car. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I like your tires. <laughs> <laughs> Them radials are not. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I have to say, man, like, I'm anxious to go to Memphis. I want to go see how fast we can go. I want to see if we can qualify and do decent or whatever and have a good time. I want to do all that. But, man, I don't know. I don't know. These streets be calling. I know. These we streets got streets be streets calling. Be calling. Like when you come name. back. These streets be, cause street racing shit be calling me. But you got, like, 12 hours to get the big tires on I'm, and test Dude, it. I want to do it right now. Like there, we had a nice day a couple of days ago, and I was sitting there thinking to myself, "Dude, I could change the third member, put the big tires on it, hang the wheelie bars off of it, and I could go up the road and make a hit or two. Like I wanted to do it so bad. You know those nights when it you come from winter, and then all of a sudden you have one of those nights where you walk outside, like it's like sixty degrees, and you're like you walk outside and you feel it and you smell it in the air and you go, "Oh my god." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. because normally on those nights if you're putting the kids to bed you're, you're telling everybody good night you got done eating dinner it was a nice you know nice night but you know that all your buddies are going to meet you at the shop 11 to get the trailer and y'all are going to go race car at 11 yeah. well we you guys are going to be here at 11 i'll yeah, be here right at after. 1 30 <laughs> but you won't race car, car will be loaded though it'll be ready <laughs> yep so yeah th these streets is calling me dude i'm I'm getting the itch really bad to get back on the days. street, dude. I'm, I can't wait till we beat that carbon fiber car all to hell on the streets. It's going to be great. Yeah, we're going to fuck that, <laughs> that car thing's up. They have pieces hanging off it and duct tape yep. all over it. But it'll be fast. Oh, man. It's going to be hateful. It is going to be hateful on the street. These no guys, like, it. I feel bad for all these guys spending all their money trying to make the cars light. Mm -hmm. They're spending all their money trying to make their cars light, and I feel like they're just going to be fighting for second place. I mean, it's just really sad. Nice. I'll be. I'll that's be, that's I'll what I was fixing to ask place. you. What's your predictions? Because everybody's changing their cars. Everybody's going crazy on their cars. They've, you know, they see Chief get a lightweight car, and it's like, oh God, we got to do oh, something. Man, my car weighs twenty four hundred pounds with a five three bore space motor. <laughs> so what's your? Uh, you've kind of seen the the. If you look online and you get on social media, you can see some of the updates from the other guys where their cars are at, what their cars look like. What's your? Uh, What's your take on, on 2016, summer of 2016? What do you got? I think they fucked up. Really? I really do. All of them? Everybody that changed anything, which is all of them. Yeah. I think they fucked up. I mean, I really like a lot of those guys. Like, I like Doc and Jerry, and those guys are friends of mine. And I just hate to see them change everything because they're so old school. They don't know electronics. They don't know data. They don't know what to do with it when they got it. They have it, but they don't even know how to pull it down and look at it. They don't even know what it is. And if they did pull it off, they'd be like, well, I don't know what that squiggly line does. I mean, what do you do to that? I mean, it's got squiggly here and squiggly over there. You just put more nitrous to it, right? <laughs> I mean, and and they had just got their cars rolling. The last couple passes I've I seen. Will, I will agree. They were rolling. I mean, we anybody some... would have had their hands full with their last couple of passes. Yeah. I don't care. I mean, it would have been a drag race with any car on the streets. So for them to change everything, go to strut front ends, go to, you know, these big, mean, long, stretched out cars that are going to be super light changes everything for them that's back to square one and think how many years it took them to get to where they were yeah yeah you know like it's not like they're going to roll their cars out of the shop and then just go make 430 passes that's well, not going to happen i did well <laughs> you're a race car well, i'm a fucking race right. car. that's what a lot of them think <laughs> and though. you have race car friends that's the, that's the big difference yeah we race car around here yeah. i mean that's if you're willing to not sleep and be a zombie at work and, and learn if you're willing learn. that's the other thing a lot of these guys aren't willing to learn because they're scared that they're gonna fuck up and they don't want they don't want that confrontation you know i mean they don't want to be the ones who try their hardest and still come up short right you know what i mean so they would rather not you know they'd rather somebody else tune it or somebody else do it or well, somebody that's else. why you catch deals with like hey man i'm gonna bring my car by the shop you take a look at the nitrous you know like fuck that pull your car in your own shed and take a look at the nitrous <laughs> shit <laughs> yep i mean <laughs> shit <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I don't like, I mean, I even like you and, and we're going to have your help with Hens's new turbo deal. But once you get us running and, and all that, like, I'm going to own that. Like, I'm not going to ask you to come put a winning tune up in it. I'm going to ask you like, Hey man, how do we get this thing fired up? 
Like once we get to that, like I'm gonna take it from we, there. We can get it after that. <laughs> yeah, just get this thing running because right now it's shooting things out the exhaust and it's not going well. Yeah, so you guys went twin turbo plan yeah. B. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like we can just take the the tune up straight out of my car. And Murder car tune up. You guys right don't need me at all. B. Then you're good. We might just bypass you. You might just bypass me altogether. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I don't. Want, I'd be I don't cool want you to know my secrets. I'll have like chief beating tune up in there. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Well, the car used to be like 2,400 pounds. Now it'll be 3,400 yeah. pounds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mike's the only one going the other, the other way. way. Yeah. Henson's the only one going the other way. Yeah. We, we have now switched roles. We showed up with a car that was so light and so different from everybody that we got kicked out of outlaw and limited races. Like we yeah. show up to an outlaw race and run what you brung, whatever it is, door cars only, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And, and so they called me three days before. You got before. kicked out of a no prep where the class was called outlaw. Run what you brought, door cars only. Correct. And you brought a door car. Well, three days prior, see, we got told six months prior, you're in. I don't care. Nobody's going to tell me no. You know. Yeah, you, well, I guess some of the, we got local by the homies. Yeah, a lot of the racers didn't want to race that lightweight Corvette with a big right, motor. because we had been 440s. But what they didn't know is you had already been 440s, too. Yeah, I just don't this, tell anybody. You just people. don't tell anybody. So they were like, <laughs> nobody goes 440s. I'm like, yeah. wait a minute. So they let yeah. me in yeah. knowing that I had been 440s, but yeah. they wouldn't let you in. Yeah, they didn't right. say anything to us. Yeah. Right. So- they tell us, no, you're not in three days later. So I stew on it all night and I come up with a plan and I called Sean and Sean had a set of wheels and on your tires and I come over to your house and broke in your shop, stole your wheels and tires. Yeah, I remember. 29, 10, fives. And you put small tires on the car because the well, small tire class had no rules. He it's told me tire. that. He said, it's 29, 10, five, one, which run what you brung. No rules, no power adders, no weight, no nothing, no chassis rules or nothing. I was like, okay, cool. Mark's down for one. He's like, all right, buddy. See you there. I pull in the gate with twenty nine ten fives on Henson's Pro Mod. It was a bad deal, man. He yeah. come running to the gate. I mean, the promoter did. The promoter came running to the gate. And he's like, "I told you you couldn't race this car here." I said, "Hey, man, we got twenty nine ten fives on there. I don't know what the problem is. We're not in big tire no more. We're a small tire car." And he's like, "I don't care if it had." Front runners on the back, you ain't racing here. I already told you that. And blah blah blah. Yeah, I, mean, I don't understand. I, mean, I was like, I, I was I like, hey man, it. I called you and told you Marcus down for me. He goes, I didn't know you were talking about this car. I was like, well, I don't have a different car. I mean, we ain't got multiple cars. This is the only <laughs> car we got. <laughs> what car did you think I was bringing? Yeah, I mean, I ain't gonna like show up with a Mustang. <laughs> yeah. And so he gets mad, and then I get over there, and of course, get out of the truck, and and you said you you said some things. I got animated. I was really upset. Animated. <laughs> I mean, you got to remember, this is like. October, November, it was what, 20 grand to win or 15 grand and to all win. All you or, wanted to do is race car. Man, and, and I'll be honest, me and Mike had talked about it before. I had eat, slept, and breathed this car all year. I felt like we had a car that could win big tire or small tire. I felt like we had a chance in either class, whatever they let us race in. So I brought both sets. I brought the big tires too. And uh, they wasn't going to let us race. And, you know, it was close to Christmas. I wanted the money, you know, because we were going <laughs> to split it. And so I was like banking on taking and some of this. And you got somebody telling you that you can't race car. Right. Even though you are a race car. Man, I was the mad. As mad as it, I was as mad as I've ever been in the history of me being mad. And I got in that driver's meeting and <laughs> man, they, they were like, get him out of here. He, he can't be here. And, and um, then you, and yeah. then he had a guy follow you around the rest well, of the time. Well, then I yelled and screamed and hollered. And then the guy with the gun, with the badge, <laughs> he followed me <laughs> everywhere. Not just the guy with a gun. He also had a badge. Yeah, he had a badge. I so think he was an off-duty cop. You had a full-on fucking police escort the whole the, time you were at this everywhere race. Everywhere I went. Like, is. you came over to our pits, and you're like, hey, guys, look what I got. He was right behind me. And he yeah, was right I there. I didn't even have to look, because I knew he'd be there. I'd be like, hey, man, check this guy out right behind me. He's got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> and then y'all would look and be like, hey, yeah. what's up, man? I remember you trying to lose him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd be like in a crowd of people, and I would like get right next to somebody big like Sean, because he's six foot twelve. <laughs> And I'd hide next to him out. and duck down. And then the guy would be like, stay off sippy toes looking for me. <laughs> <laughs> I trolled him pretty hard that day. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. But these things like that, I mean, I can't act right in public. I mean, that's why people don't like me so much. Well, that's why we bring you around. And that's why you're, but you're, we only really want to bring you to race car things. But that's the thing is like, these well, I'm, people I'm like get mad at wedding. me and they're like, I don't like you. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know, like, look, look, I am a race car. Like, I'm going to be here next tell weekend. Them Just tell them that. Look, man, I do. I'm a fucking race car. I do. I it's mean, people so all the time tell me they don't like me because they don't like me. I'm like, dude, I don't care. I, did, I wouldn't care if you did like me. It wouldn't have changed me being here. Yeah. I'm going to be here. Still going to race car. There's been times Chief didn't like me, and I still showed up. Yeah, and he's like, yeah. hey, uh, 
There was times when I didn't like you and you tried to leave our group text and I said, you're not leaving. Yeah, it's blood in, blood out. You you know, you know, the only way way you get out of the group text is if Juice kicks you out. That's it. That's it. And you got to fuck up pretty good. Yeah. So I feel like I'm, I'm safe. He kicked out Phantom. He kicked out Striker. He he did. He kicked out out Big Rob. (laughs) He kicked out Big Rob. Phantom went green on us. That's, I think that's why he got, he did. Well, he got, he got in his feelings pretty good there for a little while. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. He had like an estrogen thing going on or something. I don't yeah. know, but it got weird. He started getting on the E. But he's back. <laughs> he's uh, 100% now. We're good. Yeah. So, future is 2016. You think all these guys are fucked? You think they're not going to get it together? I think we're going to see a whole shakeup. I think there's going to be guys that you've never seen before doing really well, and all of our usual heavy hitters are going to be on the back burner struggling. Because they all got new combos. Right. But I, what about me? I got a new combo. Am I going to struggle? I don't usually count you out for anything. I usually consider if you're involved, it's going to go. You know, we went to a radio race and we, I mean, they were like, you got a what gear in that? We're like, well, yeah, it's the only gear we got. What do you mean? Yeah, we're not going to change it. (laughs) Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for that. I'm hoping for what you're saying because I ain't changed my car at all. So no, you're going to be hoping that I can go out and shake the tires and do good and still win. I feel like they're going to mess around and let that little blue Nova that accidentally got on. Yeah. TV, I think yeah. he's going to be in the top five before they can tell him to stop. There you go. Yeah. I mean, things like, like that's going to happen. That's what I try and tell. No, I try and tell guys, like I try to tell Kamikaze with Dale Camino. I was like, dude, this you thing has to run. Bigger tires on this thing has to up. run now. It has to run now because as soon as this fucking list opens, as soon as we start filming and this list opens, I'd start racing. Right you got to start race car and right away because you're going to catch all these guys slipping and you could take a car like the El Camino and go to the top if it was consistent. Dude, you know if I, mean? I was him, I'd have a Sawzall and I'd cut the whole back of that car and the whole bed out it of is. it and put the it biggest is. big tires you could find in it, 36 tall. Yeah. And I'd go race car that's, right then. That's, that's where he's at. I mean, because it don't <laughs> well, make enough power. He, he's at the cut out yeah. part. Yeah. It don't make enough power to have to like really worry about anything other than just. No, he should be able to go, light just that. Just leave mother. on everything. He yeah. should be able to light I it. I mean, a little standard bore space, you know, yeah. small bore, big block. Yeah, 496. Just put a big tire on it and let it eat. I mean, that's what we did back in the day. Yeah. I mean, there were 550 cars and they were yep. competitive. Yeah. You know, nowadays, if you show up with anything sub 520s, I mean, you can be racing. Yeah, you can go. You can go with. You can go some rounds, or you can go go up the list a few spots. I mean, you, you know, probably but, ain't gonna be in the finals on cash days with a five twenty car. No, nah, I mean you. You come, but you know. But it also depends on the night. You know what I mean? A, a long night with a lot of racing. That yeah, road's gonna get. Light. That road's you, gonna you get, get some good. dudes out at Seminole, and you can knock off some heavy yeah. hitters. Oh, yeah. And Kamikaze's always been good at catching the light. So yep, you know, sure. if he could have that car running, he'd do really well, really well. Problem is, he's like everybody else, changed everything over winter. You know, and he has no idea where he's at. So he's got to get it going now yeah. because. You know, these other guys are weeks away. Yeah, you know? I, I hope these other guys really get their stuff together, get the right people involved. You know, like whoever's building their chassis, you know, get their two cents and, and go that direction, take people they trust and, and win. The problem is there's not very many guys, chassis guys or other experts that have ever actually come out and done this. You know, they've helped over the phone or they've come, they've went to one race or whatever. But when you actually do this on a weekly basis and you see that, yeah, we had a killer tune up in it for this road and it was fast and one more pass when we'd have made the fastest pass there and we were doing good and all, everything was great. Well, then all of a sudden it rains and yeah. that road goes to shit or you go to, or you go to another wrong shit yeah, or you go to another road or somebody uses the wrong fucking mixture. And now all of a sudden it's the furthest tune up from what you've ever had ever. Yeah, and you have to, leaks oil out of their car. <laughs> yeah. Murder you, and, car. You, <laughs> and you have to make a decision on a tune up right then and there as you come off the trailer for your first hit and if you lose you lost on television in front of three million people because yes. of a tuning mistake you and you know, damn sure so. don't want to just get out ran turn it down far enough that you just get yeah, out i've ran. done that before i ain't doing that ever again yeah that's my terrible. shit will be all the way turned all the time yeah. turned i agree like yeah, we, that's I, the best way to race yep if i had a place to put a fucking license plate on that car i'd say turned <laughs> But my my it last doesn't because it's a pro mod. <laughs> but it doesn't because it's a carbon body. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's never had a VIN. It's my last driver good. wouldn't stay on the second kit when we were racing. I was like, dude, you're gonna have to be on the second kit. I got a profile on that car. Two kits, not one kits. One kits every time. One kits. I just went back and jed the first kit up. I said, all right, man, here you go. Now Let her eat. Now it's two kits on one kit. Now it's everything in the first one. Now <laughs> you, you go. got no choice. Now you have to. Yeah. You will race car. Now you have to go fast. You're going to race car. We're going to make you. Yeah. I mean, we, we clicked that thing off really fast. I mean, there were some. No, that car passes. was fast. I raced it in the final. It was fast. Uh, I believe that 
we had two of the fastest hot rods on the property that night. Just, if we had that final four, if we had drew it the other way, it would have been awesome. Yeah, it would have. Yeah, it would have. I mean, we would have knocked them boys out because that pass before when we raced you, that would have beat Kai. Right. For you sure. know, even off and the my right. pass when I raced Shane would have beat, I feel like, just about anybody. It was yeah. fucking motive. Yeah. We were struggling after the, the Flocko race. I mean, we, we hurt yeah. the training then and then struggled after that. Well. It's going to be a good year. 2016 is going to be the, the summer of 2016 is going to be one to remember for sure. Yeah, uh, it can't get here fast. Enough. So this top 10 list that we've been talking about the whole time, we have our own top 10 list here. And since you're a guest here as a, awesome. you're a race car guest, <laughs> awesome. I'm going to ask you these, 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 uh, questions here. Okay. Number 10 with McDougal carbureted or fuel injected? Carbureted. I put carburetors <laughs> on fuel injected oh, cars. Shit. Yeah. Okay, he takes car, he takes ejected cars and turns them into carbureted cars. I had an 04 GTO with a carburetor on. Everybody's like, "What the fuck is that?" Yeah, why? Like it wouldn't idle. Why? Yeah, I fixed it. It wouldn't <laughs> idle, so I fixed it. No uh, more issue. Number nine, goad or Chuck? Like least favorite or most favorite? Goad or Chuck? And I'm gonna have to go with Chuck. Okay, he's, he's more tolerable. <laughs> Number eight, big tire or small tire? Big course or bigger or bigger bigger than that yeah or radials uh number seven grudge race or no prep i really dig the no prep stuff i know you do i, that I, I really you. like you're it. big in the no prep i mean you hit the wall in one no prep and still yeah. like it i still cross finish line from a go Oh God! What? This is why Go doesn't like you. <laughs> I think I'm starting to realize they why. did. They did yeah. call him the winner in his defense. He was the winner because it disqualified me for hitting my own wall. Uh, you shouldn't. But I was in front of him. You shouldn't, shouldn't be disqualified, be disqualified from hitting your own. Wall. Remember, remember that That's deal the with the Armageddon we addressed. Yeah. That's the bonus wall. That's you can do whatever the fuck you, you can want do whatever you want with that wall. Yeah, I scrubbed some speed off and gave him a chance, and still, still he didn't catch me. Not enough. Oh God. Uh, number six, Bud Light. Or Bud Heavy. <laughs> I'm going to have to go up Bud Heavy. It's in the blood. <laughs> uh, number five, nitrous or turbo? Because you've been nitrous forever. Now you've got a new cars going turbo. What do you, I mean, what do you got here, nitrous or turbo? Man, I'm going to have to go up nitrous. It's been, it's been the, the thing. Plus, it allows you to race car more. Yeah. Yeah. If you, <laughs> you really race like race car, you better just put nitrous car. on it. <laughs> number four, shaved or hairy? We'll call it a middle road. What's the middle road? Like in between. <laughs> like, like, like three days after the shave. <laughs> three days after the shave. Okay, okay. All right. So I like he, that one. He likes a, he likes a five o'clock shadow like down that. there. Yep. A little scruffy. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> number three. Small block or big block? Big block. Or bigger? I mean, if you're going to nitrous, you better have a big block. Number I did the small block of nitrous. It's a bad thing. Yeah. Number two, Docker Monza. I like Monza. <laughs> he's pretty race car. I mean, he's not good at it, but he's really fu <laughs> fucking race car. Well, have you seen pictures of Monza's car lately? What do you think about that deal? Monza, stop. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Monza's car three years ago was the most beautiful car I'd ever seen in my life. I agree. I was like, holy fuck, he nailed it. Yes. Ever since then, it's changed, and it's not getting better. <laughs> I, I I agree. I agree 100% on that. Like, deal. no, it was like the yeah, car. Like car show uh, type. Yeah, I was sexy. like, I can't believe he's going to street race this. Dead sexy. Dead yeah. sexy. And I, I, have a th I don't really like those Camaros, but that one was the one. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not and a then, big fan of that Camaro. I know what he's trying to think, go faster. Sean, now that you've seen some pictures of it recently on, on the um, internet, what do you think about it? I think wheels make a car. Man, and those bills, especially they had those, where they fit that car. I think those wheels are pretty gross. The cartels are the ones he has now. The ones that are on it. Those are welds, though. They are welds. <laughs> oh, Sean's taking the, if you're not going to say anything nice, don't say anything yeah. at all. All right. <laughs> okay, I get it. Number one, street or track? I go street. Street? Always. Always? Yep. Right on. It's cheaper. You don't got to drive as far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, you can race car real quick, huh? yeah. Yeah. wherever you want, whenever you want. Nobody yeah. can tell you any rules no, or nothing. Yeah. No doubt. All right. Well, uh, well, we appreciate you coming in, man. We can't it wait was, to it go was to just as much fun as what I thought it would be. <laughs> we can't wait to go to Memphis. Uh, everybody, come check us out. We're going to bring our race car McDougal with us and his brother, who's also going to tell us the deal on all the race cars. Monkey, we'll have Monkey Bros. 
and uh, Kentucky will be there looking big as usual. Yeah. <laughs> Come see us in Memphis March 17th through the 20th. One more time on radios, and then that street shit be calling. Yep. So is this where, like, probably goes waiting outside to beat me up? It's not live, so you should be good. Yeah. Oh, got, so I got some lead You're going to at least have 30 minutes yeah. to drive So home. is this where we start doing, like, the Sunday night slow jam shout-outs? <laughs> yeah, let's hear this it. This is my boy, Jared. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what that means. I don't. Me either. We're out.